Stop using your old CPU. Kobe! Instead use this, the 5800X3D from AMD. And the reason why I recommend this CPU so much is that VRChat and a lot of other games have a weird little quirk about them. And only the 5800X3D caters to that quirk. And in this video, I'm going to explain that quirk, I'm going to make a tier list of all the modern CPUs, and I'm going to explain some frequently asked questions, such as should you buy Intel K or Intel KF? So that quirk I was talking about? A lot of Unity games, such as VRChat and Tarkov, as well as a lot of older games like World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV, they all really like it when your CPU has something called a large L3 cache. Now let me explain simply what an L3 case is as if you were a dumbass. So when a game wants to talk to the CPU, first information goes from the game, to the RAM, to the cache, and then to the CPU. And if you don't know what a cache is, the cache is basically the same as your RAM sticks, but it's built inside of your CPU, inside that little square that you installed. So it's much, much faster. It's faster than the acceleration of my head when my mom dropped me on the floor when I was a baby. And the cache itself is divided into three levels, L1, L2, and L3. And you don't need to know the difference right now. But basically, the type of information that VRChat likes to send, a lot of it gets stuck in the L3 cache. So that means to an extent, even if you have a fast processor, it still has to wait for information to get through the L3 cache. Now most recommended gaming processors, they have a 32 megabyte L3 cache, but the 5800X3D solves this by having a 96 megabyte L3 cache. That's literally 300% more bandwidth and it's as insane as it sounds. Literally ask any VRChat player who has a 5800X3D or even Google it, their FPS improved massively after they bought it. But the 5800X3D is not just a one trick pony with a big L3 cache, it actually has really good single threaded performance. And it's good at multi-threaded things too, although it's not really a workstation processor. But my favorite thing about the 5800X3D that makes me rush to put it in the S tier is that it's cheap as hell. Right now, it's actually around $400. And if you can get a coupon or like a sale, it can go down to $350. And some people have even found it as low as $320 recently. And when this chip is literally delivering the best frame rates possible for VRChat, like it's, like it's insane for it to be in the 300s. So if you want to build a new computer for VRChat and you want to save a lot of money, this is it. And if you're currently on the AMD 3000 or 4000 series and you're looking to upgrade, this is even more it. Because the AMD 5000 series uses the same motherboard as AMD 4000 and 3000, the motherboards are dirt cheap while being really well made. Because they've been making it for a long time and they know how to make it efficiently. Also, it uses DDR4 RAM, not DDR5. And DDR4 RAM, it's like a decade old. So again, companies are now really good at making DDR4 RAM and it's lightning fast. If you're thinking about making a new PC on a budget and you love to play VRChat, look no further than a 5800X3D. And if you're currently on AMD 3000 or 4000 series, like what are you waiting for? It's literally life changing. And I mean it because my life is VRChat and it gave me much better experience. Therefore life changing. God, I hate the real world. Anyway, the 5800X3D is the GOAT, but there are a couple other processors which you can make an argument for buying because they fill some niches that the 5800X3D doesn't. So let's move on to the next one on our tier list. Let's talk about the 13900K. So this thing's a beast. It's the number one processor on this list and it blows out the competition in terms of single threaded and multi threaded, right? So it literally does everything better than the competition besides L3 cache. And that's why I'm gonna put it here in the A tier. Because yeah, it's true, it doesn't have the best price performance ratio, but life isn't about saving money. Like people do it all the time. They pay more money for peace of mind. Like this CPU is so powerful in every single way, you won't be wanting for anything for years. You can literally just buy it, set it, and forget it. And that's really important to me because I hate opening my computer and I hate upgrading my parts and I hate like taking out the plugs out of the motherboard because they're always like so stuck so hard and I hate like cleaning and reapplying thermal paste and then you got to put it all back together at the end. Like for me, time is money and effort is money. So the less I have to like tinker with the inside of my PC, the better. And I'm willing to pay a little bit more money to avoid that. I'm also willing to pay a little bit more money to know that I have the best of the best. Like there's literally no CPU you can buy right now that's more powerful than the 13900. And even though it only has a 36 megabyte L3 cache compared to the 96 megabyte L3 cache in the 5800X3D, the massive single threaded power that this could deliver should bridge the gap a little bit. Also, those of us who do high-end VR, a lot of us are also into like video editing, graphic editing, Blender, and that's a place where a 13,900 outdoes the competition. But what really pushes the CPU into the A tier is that it's actually not that expensive because it uses the same motherboard as the 12th generation Intels. So that means the factories have had some practice making this motherboard and it's actually kind of cheap. Also, it has the option to use DDR5 or DDR4 RAM. And like I explained before, DDR4 RAM is dirt cheap and lightning fast. So even though it's more expensive than a competition, you can see that you'll save money on the rest of the parts, even though it's a latest generation processor. I don't know, if you do a lot of stuff with your computer and you're okay with like some slightly worse performance in VRChat, I think the 13900 is a great CPU to just set it and forget it. Now let's move on to the 13700K. Where would this one go? Well, considering that it's close to the 13900K, but it costs around $200 less, I'm gonna put it 
and the B tier. Now let me explain why. Like yes, the cheaper price is nice, but you're only getting half the threads. And you're getting a lower boost clock. And your L3 cache is going down from 36 megabytes to 30 megabytes. That's a 17% reduction in L3 cache. And we know how important L3 cache is to VR chat. And don't get me wrong, the 13700 is still a really strong processor. In fact, people call it a workstation processor. Not a gaming processor, but a workstation. And that's nice, but for me, if I wanted workstation power, I would just pay a little more and go a tier up. So the niche this fills is that it's basically a 13,900 minus some multi-threading power, but it's a couple hundred dollars cheaper, and a couple hundred dollars is pretty significant if you're on a budget. And that's why I'm comfortable putting it in the B tier. Personally, I wouldn't buy it, but it's here for you guys who like Intel, and you want to crush video games, have pretty good multi-threaded performance, and not break the bank. Okay, next let's talk about the 7700X and the 7600X. They're basically the same thing, but the 7700X has 33% more cores and threads. And it costs more money, of course. These cards have a really interesting value proposition because like, yeah, they're on the new platform. So you're gonna have to buy a new motherboard, latest generation motherboard, and you have to buy DDR5 RAM. And that's gonna drive the price up a little bit. And since it's a new generation of processors, the price performance ratio is not exactly there. But having said that, I'm still gonna put these in the A tier. Okay, hear me out. Remember when I said that the 13,900K is like set it and forget it? These are the opposite. Like you buy them because they're the lowest tier AMD processors, but they're just like a bandage solution. As soon as the 7800X3D comes out, which is rumored to be in a year, but it could be two years, you're going to be opening up your computer again and then you're going to be replacing them. And the thing about the 7800X3D is that I expect it to completely destroy the S tier. 5800X3D because since this is the first X3D chip like they've had a lot of time to research it and see like what makes it good what makes it bad what makes it expensive what can make it cheaper like I have super 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 high hopes for the 7800X3D and I know that AMD won't let us down I know it's just going to be like the greatest thing ever well until the 8800X3D and the 9800X3D so that's why it's a really interesting idea to get it on the ground floor and buy either a 7600X or a 7700X and then just wait for the X3D chips to come out. Because yeah, these two are the weakest CPUs that AMD is offering right now. But you're still going to max out all your games. Because most modern games are not like CPU bottlenecked. They're bottlenecked by your graphics cards. So these two will do just fine for any sort of gaming. Well, besides certain unoptimized games like VRChat where everything gets stuck in the L3 cache. In that case, yeah, this, the 5800X3D is going to do better. But otherwise, I don't think this is such a bad idea. Like look. The 7700X is in the yellow tier, which means $400 or less. And the 7600X is in the green tier, which means $300 or less. So like, it's not breaking the bank and you'll be set up for the future. Oh, also, the 7600X and the 7700X both have 32 megabytes of L3 cache. All right, next let's talk about the 7900X. Oh, this one's purple. Hmm, is it any good or is it shit? Well, I would put it right up here in the B tier. So yeah, for our purposes of maxing on FPS in Unity games such as VRChat and Tarkov, as well as old games such as World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV, the 7900X is not the greatest at that. And the press performance ratio is actually pretty low compared to the competition. But it does fill a specific niche, which I think is major enough to make it like eke into the B tier. The 7900X has massive amounts of power in both single-threaded and multi-threaded. And it also has 64 megabytes of L3 cache, which is more than most of the other gaming CPUs, which have 32 megabytes, and that's gonna be good for VRChat. And because it's a 7000 series chip, which uses a new motherboard, you'll be ready for the 7800X3D or any future X3D chips that come out. So yeah, there's a lot of good things about going for a computer with a 7900X, but obviously the downside is the price. This thing is not cheap, it's in the purple tier, and you need that new generation motherboard, and you need DDR5 RAM, so. If you can afford it, and that's a big if, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to go for it. This is here for you guys who have a really, really specific goal of having godlike performance right now and having compatibility to go for an X3D processor in the future. Okay, next let's talk about this one, the 5900X. Well, honestly, it's a really horrible deal, but I'm still putting in the C tier. Like yeah, it's a last generation CPU and you won't be able to upgrade to the 7800X3D. But there are a couple things that it does well. One, it's a legitimately powerful CPU with good single thread and multi threaded performance, and it has 64 megabytes of L3 cache. But the one thing, the single single thing keeping it out of D tier is that it's cheap as hell. Like this one is on fire sale. And I think the reason is because when it came out, it was like the super strong processor. But now the 7900X is out, and even like Intel stuff is out too. Like the 5900X has lost its prestige, and that's why right now it's dirt, dirt cheap. And even then, I still don't think many people are going to buy this. And that's why if there's like a coupon or like a sale, I think it can even drop into the green tier, meaning it'll be $300 or less. And if it ever does drop to $300 or less, you're getting powerful single core performance, powerful multi-threaded performance, good boost clock, 64 megabytes of L3 cache. Like the value is going to be insane. But uh, as it is right now, I definitely wouldn't buy it. But it's here just in case. 
is like a trump card. Next, let's talk about the 13600K. So this is actually my hands down favorite gaming CPU of the generation. Like it's so like amazingly powerful for an amazingly low price. Like Intel knew exactly what they were doing and it's just like such a well-targeted CPU. And that's why it's my pick for number one gaming CPU. And I'm gonna put it in the C tier. <laughs> Okay, let's remember, this is a VR chat tier list, and the 13600K, like, yeah, it has good single core performance, but it only has 25 megabytes of L3 cache. As much as I hate to say it, because I actually really like this CPU, that's gonna be a bottleneck. But uh, yeah, if for some reason you don't like VR chat and you're still watching this review, well, this is actually the god tier value CPU. Like, for the amount of money you pay, the performance is through the roof. And of course, the trade off is that the multi threaded performance is not really that good, but that's okay because it's a gaming CPU. You're not doing like fucking complicated ass like production on it, and you don't need to and you don't want to. But as it stands, I can recommend this for VR chat. But if you're a visitor to my channel, and I do get visitors to my channel who don't play VR chat, which is really weird, then definitely think about getting this CPU, whether you're building a new computer or you're buying a pre built, which has this 13600 k inside like this is a great ship highly recommend just not for me a person who lives his entire life inside of vr chat okay next let's talk about the 12900k trash and now let's talk about the 12700k trash trash hey, trash hey, hey, hey. Fuck. um why would you buy them why would you buy them like don't get me wrong every chip in the d tier is going to chew through modern games especially if you have a powerful graphics card but in terms of things like pure price or pure value like, everything above it just does it better. For example, the 5800X and the 5600X, like, they're not bad, but why don't you pay, like, a little more and you can get the 5800X3D, which is the god-tier chip, using the same motherboard in DDR4 RAM, by the way. And Intel's 12th gen series, like, none of these are really that bad either, but the 13,000 series is honestly goaded. Plus, Intel's 12th gen series has a serious L3 cache problem. For example, the 12900 only has 30, compared to the 13900's 36. The 12700 only has 25 compared to the 13700's 30, and the 12600 has a pitiful 20 compared to the 13600's 24. So yeah, as a person who only plays VR chat and other old games, it's hard for me to recommend the 12th gen Intel series. Okay, so that's tier list, and it's time to answer some common questions, such as, should I buy DDR4 or DDR5 RAM? And what speed should my RAM be? But before that, if you have any questions about the tier list, or you just want to flame me for being wrong, then let me know in the comments. And if this video is helping you make a decision on which CPU to buy, then give me a like. And if you want to buy any of the CPUs I mentioned in the video, then open the description and click or tap the link and it'll take you to the Amazon page. If you do decide to make a purchase, I make a really small commission and it costs you nothing extra. So that's pretty good. Anyway, on to the questions. Question number one. What's the difference between Intel K and Intel KF processors? Long story short, the Intel K processor has an integrated graphics chip inside it. So that means if your graphics card dies, you have a backup. And for that peace of mind, it only costs $20 more. Now, if your graphics card dies and you don't mind like opening the computer and then switching in your backup card, then you can just buy the KF version and save $20. But for me, I'm really lazy and $20 is not that much. So I would always buy the K version. Question number two. For the Intel 13 generation, it supports DDR5 and DDR4 RAM. So which one should you buy? Well, before the answer was simple. I would have always told you to buy DDR4 RAM because it's cheaper and really fast. But recently, DDR5 RAM is getting really cheap, especially during the holiday season. I think if you don't mind paying a little bit more money, it's really worth it to get the DDR5 motherboard and a DDR5 RAM. Just some cheap DDR5 RAM because a really good DDR5 RAM is still expensive. Anyway, by getting a cheap RAM now and a DDR5 motherboard, you're opening yourself to upgrade in the future where the good RAM is going to be really cheap. But if all you can afford now is a DDR4 motherboard with DDR4 RAM, I think it's perfectly fine. Like your computer will still be blazing fast as long as you have a good CPU and graphics card. Question number three, what megahertz and what C number should my DDR4 RAM have? Well, if you guys didn't know, the speed of your RAM is measured in megahertz, and the latency of your RAM is measured in C, or CL. And for megahertz, the higher number is faster, and for C number, the lower number is better. Personally, the combination I use and the best value combination is 3200 megahertz with C16, or 3600 megahertz with C18. It's basically the same. Now, if you want to pay more money for higher megahertz or lower C, you can do that, but the benefits will be kind of minimal. And finally, question number four. Which DDR5 RAM should you buy? Well, right now, the DDR5 6000 megahertz, which is the GOAT RAM, you can buy it, but it's really, really expensive. Right now, I would only get DDR5 4800 megahertz RAM with C40. It's really, really cheap and comparable to DDR4 RAM for the price, and you'll be set up for the future when the really good RAM comes down in price. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.